1911, two groups of explorers set off on an incredible mission. Though they used different strategies and different routes to get there, their goal was the same, to be the first in history to reach the South Pole. Now, one group was led by a Norwegian explorer named Roald Munson. Ironically, Munson had not originally intended to go to the North Pole, or to the South Pole. He wanted to go to the North Pole, but when he, but he found out that somebody beat him to it. But he was such a, a good planner and a good leader that it didn't really matter where he was going. He was intending to get there. Before his team ever set off, Munson had painstakingly planned his trip. He studied the methods of the Eskimos and other experienced Arctic travelers and determined that their best course of action would be to transport all their equipment and supplies by dog sled. Munson's forethought and attention to detail were incredible. He located and stocked supply depots all along their intended route. That way they would not have to carry every bit of their supplies within the whole trip. Munson had carefully considered every possible aspect of the journey, thought it through, and planned accordingly. And it paid off. The worst problem they experienced on their trip was that one of the explorers had an infected tooth. And it had to be extracted. So he did an excellent job. The other team was led by Sir Robert Falcon Scott. He made a number of mistakes in his planning and his execution. He used ponies and motorized sledges going into Arctic frigid conditions. The sledges stopped working five days into the journey, and the ponies had to be put down because they did not do well in the frigid temperatures. And so the explorers themselves had to pull the 200-pound sledges. Their clothes were poorly designed. All the men developed frostbite. They said it took an, over an hour to get their boots on over the gangrenous feet. The goggles were inadequate. They all became snow blind. On top of everything else, the team was always low on food and water because Scott's supply depots were inadequately stocked, too far apart, and difficult to find. At the last minute, Scott decided to take along a fifth man, even though they had prepared enough supplies only for four. Not only did they arrive a month behind Munson's team and saw the Norwegian flag flapping in the, in the breeze, but tragically, they would not survive the return journey. They died still 150 miles from base camp. Now, with that analogy in mind, it's a bit grim. But it's been on my heart because my role at this church is to captain a ship as we embark on a journey together. As Munson and Scott were, I am responsible to do four things. I'm responsible to determine the destination, obviously in collaboration with leadership. I'm responsible to chart the course and stay the course as they were. I'm responsible to be aware of and adjust for the conditions. And you can see which one of the leaders did a better job with that. And I'm responsible to lead the crew. This morning I'm going to walk through our plans for this year in these four areas. Determine the destination, chart and stay the course, be aware of and adjust for the conditions and lead the crew. So first I'm going to start with determine the destination. You know, it's difficult to get where you want to go if you haven't decided where it is. If you haven't determined your destination, you might get on the interstate and just head north or head east or head west, but if you don't know where you're going, it's going to be difficult to get there. So here's the destination I believe that God has for us. My prayer is by the end of the year is that our church would be positioned for impact in our community. And what does that mean? Here's specifically what it means. What I'm praying for by the end of this year is number one, that we would be a place for families can grow together. You know, where, where mom and dad and kids can come to our church and they can participate and engage and they can become more of what God's called them to be. And they can get what it is that they need to grow spiritually. Number two is that we are a place where children are developed. I mean, so many kids in our day and time, they're carted from one event to the next, from one appointment to the next. 
and they're, they're, they're being uh, satisfied, they're experience rich, but are they being developed? Are they, are they growing up? Are they getting prepared for life? Are they developing a vital relationship with the Lord? And I think sadly the answer is no. A lot of our kids are very busy, but are they being developed? So we want to be a place where children are actually intentionally developed. And then thirdly, that we would become known as a friend in our community. And I'm not sure how we would be judged at this point in our community. Do people know that we're here? Or, or do they just kind of pass by and, and, and wonder? And I wonder who goes there. I, I wonder what goes on there. I wonder what they believe. I wonder, I wonder what they're up to. But if we would become a place where families can grow together, where children are developed and known as a friend in the community, I believe that's the destination that we're aiming for. By the end of the year, I want to make some significant progress in those areas. So that is our destination. Number two, chart and stay the course. And kind of how do you get there, you know, as, a, as an organization? Here's, here's some steps. you got to determine your mission, right? you got to figure out what it is you're going to be about. As a church, we're going to, we have determined that we want to care, we want to grow together, and we want to reach people together as a church. So that's our mission as a church. What are our values? We've talked about this a number of times. Community, you know, being together, being like family, praying for God to do the things that only He can do in our lives, worshiping together, responding to God appropriately, studying together, digging into the Word of God together, and then being on mission together. But to me, this is where the meat is when it comes to charting and staying. Of course, those are all well and good, and they're important, you know, caring, growing, and reaching, and then our values. But as a leader, you have to set priorities, right? Do you have to do that in your life? When you think about your life and your goals and what's going on with you, what's going well, what's not going well, you've got to determine what are those things that rise to the top that you're going to really focus on and make significant progress in. Well, for us, it's three. As I've been praying about our priorities for this upcoming year, the following three areas have come to the top of my list. Number one is discipling young families. You know, for a church to build towards the future, there needs to be a core group of families with the energy to fully engage the mission for which a church exists. In order to prayerfully begin establishing this group, we will begin personally connecting with young families in our midst. It's going to be a target. It's going to be an emphasis. We also will be planning some fellowship opportunities for families. So I would just ask you, please be praying. I mean, for the future of our church, we've got to have a core group of families. With just It's just season of life. It's not that anybody's more valuable than anybody else, but there needs to be a, a core group of people with the energy to really engage and grow the church and build the church. So please be praying for that. Second priority is youth ministry. Our youth ministry is so important, and you know, I'm obviously very invested, because it's my kids that are part of the youth group. So my prayer is that FCC will become a place where children can, number one, and form, form encouraging friendships. I mean, friends very much so influence the quality and direction of your life, as you and I well know. So I want our church to be a place where our kids can form encouraging friendships, friends that are going to encourage them Trust the Lord to, to live a Christian life, to have solid values and have a vision for walking with God. Number two, that they'd be mentored by caring adults. You know, it's so important for kids to have good role models in their lives. I mean, sadly, a lot of the role models are on, they're on television. They're, they're in music. They're in movies. They're in sports. And it's not the kind of people that we want our kids and grandkids modeling their lives after. But if they could interact with somebody personally that's not flashy, I mean, I'm not flashy yet. Maybe some of y'all are, you know, real flashy, exciting folks. But that's not really what it takes to shape a life. It just takes real. It takes honest. It takes sincere and caring. Thirdly, to learn to know and trust God. I mean, it happened for me in church. There was a foundation laid for me. Now, I didn't actually get saved until I was 17, but I had, I had been very familiar with the message all my growing up years. 
and it was an important foundation that I still draw upon. And then fourthly, that kids would experience impacting others through serving. My wife and I have talked about this many times. It's like from the teenage years through the mid to late 20s, there is nothing expected of kids. I mean, they're just expected to go to school, play sports, eat, sleep, repeat. There's very little expected of kids. But I want children to know that they can make a difference. They can serve. They can impact other people's lives. They can influence others for the Lord. So I want them to experience impacting others through serving. You know, we're grateful that Brad and Carolyn have stepped up and handled this vital program since August. But over dinner last week, we were contemplating the question of, will drawing adult couples bring children, or will drawing children bring adult couples? Which one is it? And the answer, you know, it's like the chicken or the egg. Which one comes first? And the answer is yes. And that's a real challenge for us this year. If you're wanting to draw families, you have to have something for kids. If you're wanting to draw kids, you have to have something for, for adults, too. So in order to address this, uh, both areas, we're trying to do a better job. We're going to make some adjustments beginning in January. On Wednesday nights for this quarter, we're going to be joining Grace Monroe in the mill for their Wednesday night programming. Uh, the first Wednesday evening will be on January 11th. We'll meet at the church for pizza before and ride together. And then we'll return to the church after so parents can pick up their kids. So we're going to partner with them to, to give our kids an experience, be a part of a, a larger youth group just on Wednesday nights for this quarter, and give us some time to build some momentum and build. And in fact, Brian Whitmer, who's over there, he said he wants to help us build a core group. By, and he's very inviting for us to participate in that way on Wednesdays. Secondly, we'll return to having youth church during the morning service for those fifth grade and under those fifth grade and older can enjoy the service with their parents. And then preschool and nursery programming will also continue to be available at both hours. And then we're going to try to plan monthly. I mean, we will plan monthly events for the youth. We have got to focus on this area. So, discipling young families, youth ministry, and then thirdly, outreach focus. We believe that outreach is vital to the health of any church, and ours is no exception. And here are several initiatives we're planning in the coming months in order to be a light in our community that I'm excited about. In December, we begin partnering with our church next door, New Beginnings Baptist Church. Nathan Durham is the pastor, and we're doing a basketball ministry weekly. We've done it two consecutive weeks. Took a week off because I was out of town. We're going to crank it back up this week. And we've had 17 and then 25 people consecutive weeks. And the encouraging part is, uh, you know, I've got Nathan there, so us old guys get to play. You know, because the young guys would just squeeze us out. But we also pray. And, we, and, and Nathan is, is a great guy. He knows all these young men by name. And I'm prayerful that our church can be a place where we impact those in our community. And if you have any ways that you think of that you want to be a part of that ministry and bring some Gatorade or, or bring some sort of, you know, kind of a way to express kindness, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm going to work on creating opportunities for us to focus outside of the church. Because what happens when you get inwardly focused it's not pretty. You ever seen a company that gets inwardly focused and they just love their product and they love it so much that they think the customer should just come to them? And then the salesmen become order takers. They don't, they don't make calls, they just receive calls. It's bad. It's grim. Okay, so we're going to focus outwardly. In February, we're planning to partner with Chestnut Grove Baptist Church in Rutledge to do a fellowship community meal for our community. And we're going to partner with them to invite the community in to partake and to be blessed. Marsha is also paving the way for me to be a Monroe PD chaplain, and I'm excited about that. I was out on a, a, a ride-along a week or so ago, and just it, every time I go, I'm just burdened for our community because I interact with these officers, and they see what's out there. They see what you and I don't see. I mean, there's parts of the city that I've seen in a few ride-alongs that I didn't even know existed. I mean, he wanted, the officer actually said when he had a city councilman riding along and prior to the ride along, it's like things, Monroe's a good place. Monroe's a, a nice place. It's, it's, it's a peaceful place. It's, it's a good place. And then he rides along and afterwards he's like, oh my goodness. There are places in our city, it's like a third world country. It's scary. I don't even want to go there. So, I want to minister to these officers and their families. And I want us to think of ways that we can do the same. Jack and Neil continue to spearhead Celebrate Recovery on Tuesday nights at 6.30 at Grace Monroe in the Mill. Of course, 
we're all very familiar in our community, substance abuse is a huge problem. It's a root of a lot of other problems. And so there's an attempt to address that through this important ministry. And they're working hard every week, slugging it out to try and build some momentum so they can get more people involved and address this big need. So if you want to be involved in that, contact Jack and Neil. They'll be happy to plug in. And you know what? There's, there's big ways to be involved. You can lead a group. You can invite people. But you can also just serve coffee. You know, you can just be present. Hand out bulletins. With that kind of ministry, the more people, the better. It's a crowd thing. You know, people feel more comfortable to be a part. Also, many of our church members continue to be involved with fish ministries. And they're doing important, vital work in our community. If you have any questions, contact my lovely wife. She will put you in touch with the volunteer coordinator. There are so many opportunities, and they are always looking for volunteers. And I know that Karen would do a great job of finding a good fit for you. We're also doing a spring youth singing event where young folks can compete and showcase their talent at FCC. So you can see for this year, you know, discipling young families, youth ministry, and outreach focus, I believe, are the priorities. So that's the course. We've got the destination. We want to be positioned for impact. We've got the course. We're going to focus on these priorities. And then thirdly, my responsibility as a leader is to be aware of and adjust for the conditions. You know, when you're leading an expedition, you better be paying attention to what's going on out there. But you also better be paying attention to what's going on inside your little group. So that's my responsibility. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. We're just going to read one passage of scripture today. Verses 23 through 27. Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Then, this is Jesus calming the storm. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. So we see that Jesus was not at all concerned. He was aware of what was going on and he proves that with his response. He was aware of what was going on outside the boat. But he wasn't concerned. But we'll see in just a moment what Jesus was concerned about. Verse 25. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And Jesus replied, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? So we see that Jesus, the captain of that little ship, he, wasn't, he was aware of what was happening outside the ship, but he wasn't all that concerned because he knew he was in control. But what he was concerned about was the quality of their faith. Because they were showing, they didn't get it yet. They didn't understand who Jesus was. They didn't know what he was capable of. And they were afraid. Then Jesus got up and rebuked the winds and the waves. And it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So Jesus was aware of the external conditions, but pri concerned primarily with the internal conditions on his boat. You know, it's similar with a captain. You've got to be aware of what's going on outside the boat. I need to be aware of what's going on in the community. I need to be connecting with community leaders and ministries. But what I need to be concerned about is what's happening inside the boat and what's happening particularly with the crew. You know, I love our brief exchanges at service times. Uh, but we're going to need deeper fellowship and partnership than that. I mean, that's just the truth. I, lo I love it. I love sitting and chatting with you, finding out what's going on in your lives. But we're going to need deeper fellowship and deeper partnership than that. In order for us to experience God in our midst and Jesus in our ship, we're going to need to shift from friendly acquaintances to something resembling more of a crew. And I love the analogy of family. I do. But the problem with family and you know this, let's just take a family gathering, for example. Are there family members who contribute more? Are you one of those? Are there family members that you just kind of grumble when you think about what they contribute to the family meal? You know, they show up late, they consume large quantities of food, and then they leave. So I like family, but the problem with family is you can lean heavily on one part of the family, and the other part of the family just kind of enjoys the gathering. So in a church, and I'm going to be delicate with this because my heart is that I care about each person. 
But there are two kinds of people in a church. And family doesn't quite cover it. There are passengers and there are crew members. So let me, let me unpack that. And first of all, let me say we're so grateful for every passenger. I'm glad you're here. We, we're thankful for your support. But a passenger is somebody who comes occasionally. They engage thrack, and there's times where they're there, they're in. There's times when they're not. And the, but the, the key indicator is that they leave easily. You know, a passenger shows up, enjoys things, but when, it, when it's time to go, they're, they're free to go. I mean, there's nothing keeping them from departing and moving on with their day. Crew members are a little bit different, and you know who you are. Crew members come regularly. Crew members engage consistently. It's like every time there's something, they're there. And crew members linger often. They typically are the last ones to leave because they're just watching. They're hanging out. They're enjoying the fellowship, but they're watching to see if there's anything they can do, to see if there's anything that needs to be closed down or tidied up. And if you're not sure, the way that you can tell is if you, when you decide, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it this Sunday and there's legitimate reasons for that, if you don't have to call anybody and let them know, then there's a good chance that you're a passenger. And again, we love passengers. So we get to the fourth thing that I'm responsible for. So I believe a big part is just being aware of the conditions. You know, I need to be aware of the community, but I need to be aware of what's going on inside the ship. And this is an area where I'm growing. Fourthly, my responsibility is to lead the crew. And again, I will always love the passengers. We wouldn't be here without you, truthfully. We're grateful for your support. And you may have very valid reasons for remaining a passenger. But as a shepherd and a captain, I'm going to sink the ship if I don't lead the crew. It would be foolish for a captain to spend all his time checking on the passengers. Can you imagine that? You know, rough seas, there, there's danger at every corner, and then they go looking for the captain, and, he, and he's in his cabin writing, writing notes to the passengers. How, how's the food? You know, Are you comfortable? Are you enjoying the voyage? Can, can, we make any, can, can we do anything to make it more comfortable for you? And then you've got the crew out there, and they're fighting the storm, and they're undervalued. They're, they're, they're under-communicated with. And they're not, they're not trained. The captain doesn't spend his time training. Hey, in this situation, this is what you do. If we encounter, you know, this situation, here's what you do to make sure we don't sink. The captain's just in there writing notes, making sure our passengers are happy. So if you're a crew member, I, you know, here's another way that you know it. I'm not calling to check up on you. I'm calling to ask you for something. Or I'm calling to thank you. So you know who you are. But if you're a passenger that would like to explore, and I've had people talk to me throughout the year, if you're a passenger who would like to explore being more like a crew member, please seek me out so I can help you find a role here that fits you. And I would just ask you to pray about becoming a crew member. Because the truth is, and this is kind of something that I've come to realize in just the time that I've been here, a church full of passengers can't grow. Can't. Everybody's kind of everybody is, is loving and supportive and encouraging, but they're just along for the ride. You need to grow the crew before you can grow the church. Because you know what? If you get visitors, if you get people who don't know the Lord and they come into your church, who do you think they're gonna be? Think they're gonna be crew members? No way. They're just they're just they're just exploring. They're just they're just trying it out, sitting down. They're just, they're just trying to figure out whether or not we're the right kind of people for them. They're not going to be crew members. They're going to be passengers. So we've got to grow the crew in order to make room for the passengers that God loves and that God cares about whether or not they have an eternal destiny with Him. So lastly, what can you expect from me as your pastor this year? Four things I've determined as my personal priorities as your leader. Number one, I'm going to develop people. That's something that only I am responsible for, you know, until we can get to a point where we've got other folks that are ready to develop other folks. So I want to help people explore and fulfill their God-given callings. Now I want to help you. I want to, figure, I want to help you figure out where you fit in God's story. 
So for you crew members out there, here's a few questions for you to consider this week. And I'm going to be contacting you. And if you, don't get a con if you don't get contacted, then you might say, you know what, I think he's misunderstood. He thinks I'm a passenger, but I'm not. Let me know. But the people that I know, you know, without question, are, are part of the crew. I'm going to be contacting you. Know, I want you to be thinking about three questions. What do you love to do? What do you love to do? What are the things that just, you just love it? You, you, would, you do it all day. You do it for free because you do. Where would you like to grow this year? What, are, what is an area where you feel like, man, I, I'm, 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 this is uncomfortable. It's out of my comfort zone, but I want to be a part of this. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I'm willing if somebody would lead me. So what do you love to do? Where would you like to grow this year? And then thirdly, if you're a crew member, who can you invite to be a part of the crew? And it could be somebody who's here. It could be somebody who doesn't even go to church here. They don't have a church home, but you know they've got the right heart. They've got the attitude. They've got the willingness, and they're not going to church anywhere. So who can you invite to join the crew? Secondly, other than develop people, my job is to see opportunities. So I'm going to be out in the community. I'm going to be within these walls, and my job is to go out and scour the landscape, see opportunities for us that are going to help us reach our destination, because that's we got to get there. I mean, we got to get to a place where we are positioned for impact in our community. And so when I see an opportunity, if it's Celebrate Recovery, if it's FISH, if it's a new class, if it's a fellowship group, whatever it is, I need to be looking and seeing those opportunities, and then we're planning to move in those directions to get to our destination. Thirdly, as you've already heard, I'm out there forging partnerships. I mean, there are people and organizations in our community, they're on the same course. They see the same needs as we do. And we need to work together. I mean, many hands make light work, and multiple organizations and multiple collaborative initiatives, man, that can really, really change things. So I'm going to be out there forging partnerships. And then fourthly, I'm going to be out raising awareness. You might consider this marketing. I want you all to be aware of what's happening in the community so that you can engage, and many of you do. And I'm always so impressed at the number of you who get out there and get involved. But I'm also going to be out in the community helping them be aware of us, that we're here, that we care, that we want to be a place where they can become what God's called them to be. So that's it. We've determined the destination, we've charted the course, we're assessing the conditions, and I'm promising to lead the crew. My prayer is that this year will be an, a significant year. I'm, I'm optimistic, I'm full of faith, and I'm ready to go. And the question is, are you ready to get there? Are you ready to go with me? So the way I want to close this service is I want us to stand, I want us to come close, and then we're going to pray together for the future of our church. So, come back with me.